You're going to have fun. All right, here we go. A lesson one, change in tandem. Day one, we're doing examples one through four. And day two, we're going to do examples five through 11. These are our goals and objectives by the end of day two. Okay? Bam. All right, function rules. So as we talk about our function rules, we're going to just review vocabulary that you should already know. Agree? Yes, okay? So starting off with the definition of a function, to summarize it, a function is a relationship between an input and an output. output. Yes, okay? The set of input values is called the domain. domain. So in this blank, we're going to write? Domain. Domain. Okay, it's the domain of the function, and a set of output values is called the range, range of the function. Okay. Now, there's the rule of four concept developed by Harvard Calculus Consortium. Uh, will basically strengthen and understand in different ways to represent functions. So we're going to dive into their whole little rules of four. Okay. Uh, basically, their rules of four are just what are our ways to represent a function? Got it? So what are the ways we can represent a function? Um, when I read this, I wrote the rule of four is nah. Uh, but I don't know if that's how they want you to say it or if they want you to say G-N-A-W. <laughs> nah. So um, what does the G-N-A-W represent? Is graphically, numerically, algebraically, and words, right? These are all the ways that by now we should be able to work with a function. Yeah? Words. Yes. Words. By words, they mean word problems, applications. Look. Wayne. Yeah, they could have they could have they could have did anything else with Gana. Um, but they're they're Harvard guys. We're just gonna let it go. It's not us. It's Harvard. Um. So up first, we're gonna talk about our evaluating function. So representing it in what we call algebraic format. Is this algebraically for y'all? Yes. Okay. Evaluating functions means that I'm given a value for x and I'm going to be substituting in. Evaluating means that we are substituting. So when I see evaluating, I should think substituting. To substitute, right? All right, so quickly, uh, well, I'm not going to quickly. I'm going to give you, is it fair to say six minutes yeah. to evaluate, right. to review your evaluation skills? I was trying to give you two minutes of problem. We'll do six. All right, you have six minutes to evaluate, and then we will check. All right, so on the first one, this is just a numerical substitution, right? Yeah. So if you're near... For our numerical substitution, we it looks like this. So we have 2 times 3 squared plus 5 times 3. Yeah? Yeah. That led us to 2 times 9 yeah. plus 15. Plus and that leads us to 18 plus 15 plus equals 33. 33. How do we do with level 1? Good. All right. Level 2 is now we have the original function plus that change, right? Yeah. So we already know the value of f plus f of three. Yeah. And we already know what f of x is. So we're just substituting what they are. What is f of x? f of x is 2x squared plus 5x. What is f of three? Plus 33. Yeah. That's all you had to do. That's it. Nothing else. Right. You just had to substitute that knowledge. Yeah? Right, right. All right. On f of 2x. So f of 2x is now saying that all of my single x's are now double. double. So we have 2 times 2x squared oh. plus 5 times 2x. Yeah. So that's going to leave you with 2 times 4x squared plus 10x. When you have a power, it goes to all of the factors inside. Okay? So we're left with 8x squared plus 10x. And that's it. And that is because I can't simplify anymore, right? No, you don't need to. That's not, that's factoring. You're not factoring. You're just evaluating. Yep. Okay. Uh -oh, we're starting early. On, what happened? <laughs> we're starting early. Um, on D. So on D, it says that I'm taking the function and I'm making it a negative, right? That means I'm taking the function and my output is going to be the opposite of whatever is happening. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So this equals, this whole thing is going to be turned into its opposite. So I'm distributing that negative. So we're going to end up with negative 2x squared minus 5x. Oh, I got it right. 
Okay. Okay. E is the opposite. E is not affecting my output. E is affecting my input. Do we see that? E is affecting my input. So it's going to become two parentheses negative x squared plus five times negative x. Now we all know a negative times a negative is a positive. So is that negative x squared affected? No, it's still going to be positive 2x squared. However, this is a positive and this is a negative, so it's going to become a a negative 5x. Which part, babe? Okay, yeah. All right, so here we plug, we substituted in negative x. Agree? Agree. That square means that I have two of them. I have a negative x times a negative x, and that makes it a positive x squared. So therefore, this is unchanged. It's just going to be 2x squared. Right here, I have a positive five and a negative x. A positive times a negative makes a negative, so we end up with minus five x. Okay. Um. Hopefully, you guys may have learned the tic tac and um, tic tac toe in algebra one. The goal in tic tac toe is to win, right? To get three in a row. Yay! I'm a winner, right? Everything else is where the negative goes. So this helps you remember when you're multiplying and dividing by negatives, what are your outputs? A positive times a negative is going to be a negative. A negative times a positive is going to be a negative. And a negative times a negative is going to be a positive. What is algebra one doing, guys? Oh, well, there's your tic-tac-toe for multiplying and dividing. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Our last one, um, x plus three. Okay. So our x plus three, this should help you remember how to quote unquote foil. Yes. Did it bring back foil? So we had two parentheses, x plus three squared plus five times x plus three. What? Because you're substituting in your x with what? x plus three. So wherever x used to be, it became x plus three. Here, this means I have a binomial times a binomial. It means you have a binomial times a binomial. And this means I can just distribute, all right? So we have five x plus 15. And this is multiple distribution. What is the shorthand cut call for multiple distribution? Foil. So we're going to foil our little lives away. So we have x times x is? x times 3 is? 3 times x is? And 3 times 3 is? 9. And then we combine like terms. So we have 2 times x squared plus 6x plus nine plus five x plus 15. What is the last thing I, well, second to last thing I need to do here? Multiply. Distribute. Multiply. Now I can distribute that too, right? So I end up with two x squared plus 12 x plus 18 plus five x plus 15. And I ran out of room. So now final step is to do what? Combine like terms. So 2x squared, does it have a friend? No. I have 12x and 5x, which makes 17x. And then I have 18 and 15, which makes 33. I'm going to squeeze that in there really kindly. Oh, yes. Welcome back to algebra. All right. All right. We're getting those brains going. How do we feel about evaluating? Fun, man. It's fun. So fun? All right.